Okay, so let me show you what I've got going on here. Uh, I'm getting ready to do the layup in the vacuum bag. So I wanted to show you that I've got everything ready to go because I'm going to be using that, uh, that fast uh, epoxy. So it'll set up pretty quick. But I've got uh, my tape. This is butyl tape for vacuum bagging. I've also taken this, uh, this bolt or screw and this is what holds the, uh, the bottle cage on there. And I've taken that and put some Teflon tape on the threads and also um, waxed it down so that the epoxy won't stick to it. Um, the Teflon tape I used so that the air wouldn't come up through there um, and make uh, vacuum leaks in the bag. So the frame's pretty much ready to go. Um, right here I've got my, uh, my layup schedule. Um, I used that uh, piece of paper like I told you. Um, I've got the correct width and I've also um, found out where the, the bolt hole goes. And so I've, I've cut this out on the uh, carbon fiber here. You can see it there. I also see it on the other side. This is the, uh, um, the bi-directional weave and also the unidirectional weave. So this will go backwards to what you're seeing here. So basically you take this, uh, this pre-preg when we make it and put that on top of the bike. So, so that will go the frame and then the unidirectional, then the bi-directional and then some peel ply. And the peel ply will just be there to separate the, uh, um, the carbon fiber from the breather cloth. So that's that there, the breather. Um, I've also got my tube ready to go with some butyl tape on the end there. Uh, this is for the vacuum line. Um, I'll plug the, uh, this end in into the manifold and that goes to the vacuum pump. So I'm going to be using some stretch lawn uh, vacuum bagging material. I love this stuff. I um, highly recommend it. If you don't have any of this, um, you know, use what you've got. Um, and then also I've got this piece of butyl tape on the end here. When this wraps around the frame, this will attach the other side so it makes a tube. Okay, so this part might be a little bit long and boring, but it'll be very educational. Okay, I've got this thing uh, vacuum bagged and it's pulling about 25 inches of uh, mercury. So we got a good suction there. Um, one thing to note is you'll see a little bit of wrinkling in the bag. That's okay. However, you got to be careful with wrinkling in the, uh, the layup. A lot of times you'll think that it's just the breather that's wrinkling, but in reality it's the uh, carbon fiber as well. So if you get any type of wrinkling, um, that uni a lot of times if the wrinkling is going uh, lengthwise of the, uh, the down tube, you're okay because the uh, the wrinkling um, is actually just squishing the uh, the uni this way. So what you'd have to do is sand that off, um, sand off the outer layer of, of carbon fiber, which is the uh, the one that we put on the 45, and then rewrap it and uh, vacuum bag it again, or tape it or whatever you're you're using. So um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that this looks uh, pretty good so far. I will come back in a few hours and pull it apart and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's what this looks like after the, uh, the vacuum bag and 
the breather and pill ply has been taken off. Um, this is before any type of sanding. Now I'm not going to sand this until after I filled it. And the reason why is because I want to take off as little of this carbon fiber as possible. And what I'm going to be trying to do is blend this um, here and probably up into here somewhere with filler. I'm going to use split second because it's a uh, it's a lightweight filler, so it'll add less weight to the frame. Um, you know, bondo or something like that will add a little more weight to it. Probably not. Uh, Probably not too noticeable though. Um, the difference may not mean much, but, but anyway, that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Uh, you can see here that this was a good, um, this was a good layup. Uh, there's very little wrinkling. Uh, there's a little spot here, just a tiny little bit of a wrinkle, and a tiny one right here, which uh, that'll sand off okay without. Uh, jeopardizing the, the um, integrity of the frame. So anyway, i um, pleased with it so far and I will start filling and fill you in there. Okay, so I got this filled with that split second filler and uh, you can see here how it filled in the uh, the dips and the uh, the cloth weave there. That's good because um, we didn't take away too much of the, uh, the wrap structure. So it's better to have more filler than it is to sand away too much carbon fiber. Uh, you can also see here that we transitioned from the uh, wrap to the uh, frame and that turned out well and also here. Um, the longer out you go here, um, the less noticeable it's going to be. Uh, this is probably okay though. Um, I looked down the tube, tube and it looked pretty straight. Too bad we couldn't save the giant, but I'd rather have the uh, giant painted over than have the giant and a bowl chair. So anyway, um, getting ready to paint it. I've hit this with, uh, with some 320 all around here. This is the area we're going to paint. So um, let me show you what I've done. I went to the uh, the automotive store and picked up some Duby Color uh, primer. And I just went ahead and picked out the best matching paint I could find for this frame. Now, um, one thing to note is you could have a professional do this. Uh, he's probably going to charge you uh, around $100 to $200. Um, if you go to the uh, auto body paint shop, uh, they're going to uh, charge you to match the frame. Uh, Giant does not give out their uh, color codes, uh, which is unfortunate um, because they don't really want you to to repair their carbon fiber frames if you have a problem. So um, I went ahead and found that that color that best matches it, and then some clear coat to go on top of that. Okay, the nice thing about using primer is that it helps to uh, show you all of the imperfections um, that you still need to fill in. Um, usually when I'm doing this, uh, I don't try to fill at all before priming it. I'll usually prime it and then fill in all these little uh, imperfections and spots with some pro glazing putty. And then I'll prime over that again. So just wanted to show you this and uh, let you know that it's normal for, for this to look like, like it does. Okay, I've gone ahead and primed this and you can see here that I've, I've uh, actually taken some tape and and I removed it um, basically so I can get a, a nice uh, transfer or a, a feather into this existing paint. Um, you know, if, I'm, if I go like this, I can feel that primer on there. You can see here how I've uh, feathered it into that paint. So um, hopefully I'll get a nice transition there. Um, you know, I like the way that this looks with the uh, contrast and colors. I kind of wish I would have done this a different color other than white because that white's going to be tough to match. In fact, when I looked at it in the sun, it looked like it was a little bit whiter than the white that's on here already. So, you know, if my friend wants to paint this, he can. No big deal. I'm not offended. But I thought I would uh, go ahead and paint it, um, you know, as close as I could to see if he liked it. Okay, so here is the uh, finish of the repair job that I just did. Um, painted it yesterday, pulled the tape off of it, and it turned out really nice. Um, you know, the only problems with it are what we expected, which was the, uh, the paint color is different from the original. So when I mask this off, I try to mask it off straight so it looked good. If you're concerned about it, you can put decals on there in that transition, and you'd never know. So there's the uh, head tube transition. You can see it's slightly different color. It actually w looks worse on the video than, than in real life. But uh, anyway, the, uh, the down tube where we wrapped it right here, the uh, transition and the, uh, 
the way we blended it turned out really nice. Can't even tell that there was ever a crack or a repair job done there. So I'm happy with that. Um, see if I can give you a different angle on it. I don't know if you can see it real good, but the way that it blended was really nice. So happy with that. Um, as far as weight goes, we added about a tenth of a pound to it. So not a huge difference there. Uh, as far as safety and reliability now, um, where we did the repair, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that, that that area is now as strong, if not stronger, than the factory original. And the reason why I say that is because I added almost twice as much carbon fiber just in the wrap around that area. And if you can remember, there was no damage here on the bottom of the down tube, just uh, some cracks on the top. So got those nice and, and uh, sturdy now. Um, as far as other parts on the on the bike frame, um, I couldn't see any structural damage from the outside. Like I was telling you earlier, um, I need endoscopes and thermal imaging stuff to to really know for sure. But I'm fairly confident that this frame is is in working order, and I would uh, myself be willing to go out and ride this and not worry about it. Uh, I wanted to show you this bike with all the uh, components and wheels and everything put back on it. My friend went ahead and bought another frame from Giant. They gave him a discount since since this frame broke. Uh, sent him back 700 bucks. And I bet if he, uh, if he saw this now, I'd probably wish he would have saved his money and um, just went with this repair job. Uh, material wise, got about $50 into it. Time took about uh, I don't know, if you're new at this, it'll probably take you about five or six hours to do it. Uh, a professional will do this job for about $250. I just had a cousin who had a bike frame that that uh, cracked along the uh, top tube and it cost him 250 bucks to have it repaired. They'll do a little nicer uh, paint job for you. Anyway, if somebody like me did it, you might be able to find someone like me to do it for 150 bucks or so. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I uh, hope you guys learned something from this. And uh, just remember to be safe. Uh, test your frame out. Don't ride it on busy roads for, you know, maybe a couple hundred miles just to make sure that it's going to go good. Um, you know, maybe take it over a little bit of rough terrain. Uh, listen for cracking. Anything that feels funny, you know, if anything's mushy, stop riding it. Um, just be careful, do uh, pre-ride inspections on it, just to make sure that everything is good. So anyway, hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can find me at theprojectjunkie.com where you can find other projects and some other cool stuff. Uh, I built a couple of bikes that has tutorials on there for, for bike builds. So anyway, I will catch you guys next time. Let me show you this. Got to be careful with this. Uh, this is what I was telling you about with the exotherm. Um, when when you have too much epoxy together, it starts to get real hot like this. And you can see it's starting to melt the cup. So I've never had this stuff catch fire, but uh, there's always a first time for everything. <laughs>